What's up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to save websites offline and save them to your computer. This is a really cool app that I found and the developer was gracious enough to give me a free copy of this review, but this video is not sponsored, so everything I say, I came up with myself. But if you're new here, I make videos all about how to increase your productivity on your Mac, iPad, and iPhone. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing down below. So this app is called Site Fetcher and it has a really simple interface and without changing any settings, I'm just gonna paste in my personal website and this is not a big website at all. It has maybe 10, 20 images and like one page of text. But just to show you how this works, I'm gonna hit start download. So I have this saved in my documents folder and you'll see we have the www folder and that's just because that's a subdomain. But we can jump into the main one here and just open up that file. Now just to kind of prove how this works, I have the original site pulled up, obviously with a web connection, and then this is looking at the local files, and I can click through all the different pages, and it looks exactly the same. Everything is working just as it should, loading all the files, and there's pretty much no lag or anything missing. So that's just a quick demonstration of how it works, but if we jump into the preferences, we have a couple of different settings. So under the general tab, we can exclude certain domains. Now, this isn't just for excluding a domain to be downloaded, but it's also any references to that site. So maybe if you have a website that you're downloading that references a lot of YouTube videos, you could exclude anything referencing youtube.com, and then it won't pull in any of those links or assets. Now the max levels will determine how many layers deep Site Fetcher will go when there's certain links that are related to each other. I know that's not a great explanation, but basically if there's a link on the website you're downloading that goes out to another website and then that website links to another, that basically just determines how far it's gonna go. Obviously the higher you go, it's gonna take longer and longer because it's going across multiple different sites. I just left that at five and I honestly wouldn't worry about this setting too much. You can also change the bandwidth limit if you need to do that. And then you can change the identity. So if you're trying to access a specific part of the site or iteration like the mobile or tablet or desktop, you can come in here and specify which profile you wanna use if you're testing different versions of the site or if you just wanna leave it to the default profile, just go to site fetcher and you can leave it at that. Now under advanced, we have things like only accessing HTTPS links. That's just gonna be more secure. We can also request non-cache files. You can add a delay or a timeout for the download, but also you can search for specific files. So if you only wanna download, say, zip files or PDF files from a specific website, you could go into the advanced settings and type in that extension, so zip or PDF, and it can either exclude or just accept those file attachments. Now the app does claim that you can log into FTP and download your files and honestly I haven't got this to work. I might not fully understand how you're supposed to do this, but I looked through the support. I couldn't really figure it out, so that's part of the app. <laughs> now I did actually put in the Mac Square website just to test how it works with bigger websites. And now this obviously will take longer. I think it took maybe five to seven minutes and it was downloading over 800 different files. Now my website is really fast, it's responsive, but even then it took a couple minutes to download. But this is what it looks like loading from my desktop. So all the files here are local. I can click on any one of these blog posts. I can even go to a different page and everything just shows up exactly as it would if you're loading it online. And the site structure is all here just as it is on my FTP. So it's got the different pages and different assets for images and all that kind of stuff. So that did a pretty good job. Now I did a little bit of research around this concept and there aren't actually tons of other apps that will download sites offline for you, especially for the Mac. There is an app called Site Sucker that I believe is $4.99, but between that and Site Fetcher, those seem to be the only apps really available and most used for downloading websites. Now, Site Fetcher is $9.99, but comparing that to Site Sucker, it seems like it has a much nicer interface. It's got a little bit more customization when you're downloading the files. So honestly, if you're looking for a tool to do this, I would recommend using Site Fetcher. But anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one.